Sexual urges are one of the strongest forces of the human body. In fact, if you ask most people what they have struggled with the most, a vast majority of them will tell you that their greatest temptation has been in the area of sexual purity. Sometimes these urges can become too strong to the point that it turns even the most powerful people on the planet into slaves. Christians too are not an exception to this either. Many believers in Christ have reported battling in the area of lust and sexual immorality even after getting saved. But the question many have asked is, why do many of them still find themselves struggling with lustful thoughts or addictions to things like pornography even after praying and committing to living a life of purity? In this video, I will answer this question both from a spiritual and biological perspective. I will also explain how the devil takes advantage of your biological system and the effect it has on your brain. But first of all, it's important to know that the natural sexual urge itself is not inherently sinful. I know for years people have preached saying no one should even have those feelings at all. But this is wrong and I will tell you why. Contrary to popular belief, a healthy sexual desire is a natural inbuilt system put by God into every living creature. This was to facilitate His commandment of multiplication. The only issue here is that God created those desires to be exercised within the context of marriage. When those natural urges are fed or trained in the wrong way, they can lead to what we call perversion. You see, for everything God created, He also created what we call a natural order. This means each and everything God created also has certain boundaries, as well as the ability to be brought under control if we choose to. For example, God gave us the natural appetite to be hungry and eat, but we also have the ability to control these appetites and choose not to eat if we want to. Otherwise, if we keep eating without control, it will become gluttony which is unhealthy. In other words, the desire for food or sex is not wrong in itself. But God expects us to exercise self-control over them. The difference between sex and food is that there are no boundaries as to when we can eat. But for sex, it is only permitted within the context of marriage. And so God expects us to exercise self-control which is also a fruit of the Spirit. Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 12, All things are lawful to me, but all things are not necessary. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. In other words, even though you have the power to do something, you are still expected to be in control and not brought under the power of those things. When your natural urges become unrestrained, the devil takes advantage and amplifies those urges to the extreme. So instead of you controlling your urges, the urges begin to control you. This is what leads to lust and perversion. In fact, under normal circumstances when a man looks at a woman, there shouldn't be any lustful or sexual desire that arises in his mind. When he takes a look at her, the first instinct that should come to his mind should not be sex. For example, when you look at your sibling like your brother or your sister, your mind never goes in that direction. This is because there is a natural inbuilt restriction God puts in place. But when those natural boundaries are broken, lust creeps in. And this is when members of the opposite sex begin to view each other as objects of gratification. And this is exactly what pornography promotes, it sells the idea that anyone can be an object for gratification. It breaks the boundaries God set to the point that when members of the opposite sex look at each other, the first thing that pops up in their minds is how to sleep with them. But you might be wondering, if God designed you with natural urges, why is it so hard to control them? You see, even though urges are natural, the devil can in most cases try to manipulate an individual to begin to lust. The word lust in Greek is called epithumia, which means to desire or crave for something that is forbidden. When you watch pornography or look at women lustfully, you are craving for something that is forbidden. This is the part the devil plays. Engaging repeatedly in a sinful behavior like watching pornography literally changes the neural pathways of your brain. Every activity you do, whether good or bad, the brain tries to create a memory of it to remember where that pleasure came from. When a person engages in an addictive behavior, like watching pornography or masturbation, it triggers the release of dopamine in the reward pathway of the brain. Dopamine is known as the pleasure chemical, as it creates feelings of pleasure and satisfaction. Over time, as this behavior is repeated, it leads to changes in the brain where more dopamine receptors are formed in the reward pathway. 
This causes the same behavior to no longer induce as much dopamine release. To compensate, the addicted person then needs to partake in the behavior more often or in a more intensified manner to achieve the same dopamine levels and feelings of reward or pleasure. This leads to the behavior becoming hardwired as a strong habit through neural pathways in the reward system getting reinforced each time. So two things are happening here. First, the devil is enticing that individual to continue to lust by watching porn and other stuff. Secondly, the brain is constantly being rewired and trained to expect unnatural levels of dopamine associated with that sinful behavior. So there is the spiritual aspect, and there is also the natural aspect. When that person decides to stop, it causes withdrawal symptoms, as the brain has become reliant on the dopamine spikes. This perpetuates the addictive cycle, making it very difficult to break free from the addiction. The Bible says in the book of James, chapter 1, verses 13 to 15, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But every person is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. But the most frustrating problem is that when these individuals addicted to these sins decide to repent and break these sinful chains, their brain and their flesh have already been trained. So even though Jesus Christ has set them free, their brain, which had been previously programmed in the wrong way, begins to fight against them and demand those urges to be met. Even after that person repents and commits to living rightly, this corrupted neurological wiring continues to make demands for those pleasures to be met because the brain actually doesn't know what is considered good or bad. All it knows is the fact that it felt good when a certain act was being carried out. And because this individual is under pressure to give in, Satan and his demons take advantage of this vulnerability. So while you the individual has been delivered and the demons have left, your own flesh begins to wage a war against you. If you give in to temptation and relapse again, it reopens the doorway for those same demons of lust to come in again and continue to control you. This perpetuates the addictive cycle, making it very difficult to break free from the addiction. Jesus said in Matthew 12 verses 43-45, When an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes into the desert, seeking rest but finding none. The evil spirit in this context could also be the spirit of porn or masturbation or lust. Then it says, I will return to the house I came from. Now notice that the evil spirit uses the word I, which means it has an identity. It also states that it will return to the house it came from, meaning it has the memory that it came from your body. So it returns and finds its former home empty, swept and in order. Then the spirit finds seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they all enter the person and live there. And so that person is worse off than before. So you see from the words of Jesus that there is a spiritual side to addiction. But it doesn't mean every time you have an urge, a demon is behind it. Remember I said the devil only takes advantage once you give in. Natural urges don't put you under pressure. But when it becomes too persistent and you begin to fantasize or lust, you are already crossing the line. Jesus warned about this in Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 to 28. You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. It's not the look itself that is wrong, but the intention behind the look. That's why he said, whosoever looks at a woman to lust. The key word there is the word to, which refers to the intentions. So in this case, the individual has two things fighting him or her, their flesh and the devil. In a very literal sense, sin shapes the physical structure of our brains making it difficult to change deeply entrenched thought and behavior patterns. This helps explain why defeating lust once and for all often remains an ongoing battle for believers who have previously given in to temptation. The Bible warns us not to let our appetites control us, but instead bring them under God's authority. 1 Thessalonians 4.4 4 says that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. This means we are responsible for putting our bodies and desires in order, not letting them rule over us. But Scripture offers hope that we are not helpless against the enemy's schemes. 1 Corinthians 10.13 promises, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, 
and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation he will also provide the way of escape, that you may be able to endure it. This means you have the authority to bind and overcome every type of thought or negative pattern that tries to become a stronghold in your life. The first way to overcome these types of pattern is to repent and believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Only then will you have the authority to bind and put the devil in his place. Without Jesus Christ in you, you will simply be an empty vessel without power. The second step is to keep saying no to your flesh and resisting those urges continuously. As you keep doing this, you effectively weaken the spiritual forces propelling those lustful desires. Although during this time you might feel pressured and get what we call withdrawal symptoms, you should not be afraid. The more you say no to those urges, the weaker they become. By continuously overcoming, you will defeat the enemy. And by continuously saying no to that sin, your brain will start rewiring itself until you heal completely. Thank you for watching. If you loved our video, please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel.